In this video, we're going to calculate the inflation rate using the GDP deflator method. And in this example, we have a country that produces three products, pizza, apples, and carrots. And notice that pizza and apples are produced domestically, but carrots are imported. So the first thing that we need to do is calculate nominal GDP. And for GDP, remember, we only want to include things that are produced domestically. So we're basically just going to ignore the carrots. So for 2011, we've got 100 pizzas times $4 plus 60 apples times $1. And that gives me $460 for nominal GDP. For 2012, we've got 150 times 6 plus 70 times 2, which is $1,040. And for 2013, we've got 170 times 6 plus 80 times 250, which will give us $1,220. Remember, nominal GDP reflects both increases in prices and increases in quantity, so it's not very useful to us, actually. Real GDP will reflect only changes in quantity because we'll only use these base year prices in our GDP calculations. So for real GDP, we don't need to redo this calculation for the base year for 2011 because I know that we're using the same prices, same quantities as we did for nominal GDP, and that will still be $460. But for 2012, we're now going to use the quantities from 2012, but the prices from 2011. So that will give me 670. And then in 2013, we use quantities from 2013 and prices from 2011. So we're holding prices constant at our base year prices and just allowing quantity to change over time. So now we've calculated nominal and real GDP, we're ready to calculate the GDP deflator, which will be nominal divided by real times 100. And in our base here, that's always going to be equal to, whoops, 100 by definition. So nominal over real times 100, that's 155.2. And, oops, nominal over real times 100, that's 160.5. All right. <clears throat> Final step is to calculate the inflation rate. That's the rate of change or the percent change in our GDP deflator, which is the price index that we're using in this calculation. So for inflation from 2011 to 2012, oops, there we go. We've got an increase from, that's new minus old over old, and that's going to give me 55.2% inflation. And then from 2012 to 2013, I've got 160.5 minus 155.2 divided by one, sorry, 155.2. which if you plug into your calculator is going to give you 0 0.034 or 3.4% rate of inflation. 
All right, now it is important to note that these numbers here are positive, right? Prices are increasing over time, but they could also be negative. That just means that prices are decreasing over time and that's not a problem. So here's our answers for the first part of this example. In the next video, I'll show you how to do inflation using the CPI method.